today we are going to take a look onto homemade stuff. The things that I'll show you were all made by me, and we'll start with the latest thing I made. But um, this was not made at home. This was made at school, and um, I'm visiting a technical school. And um, oh, we built this thing here. It is um, a testing uh, device for you know those computer network cables. There's one jack right here, the other one right here, and uh, power switch right there. And um, well, you plug in the cable on this side and on this side, and then um, you turn it on. And this LED here starts flashing. And using some integrated circuits in there, the whole thing makes um, these LEDs also flashing, and that works. Um, you have the, the the cable in there, and each time this thing flashes, one of these LEDs will flash. Normally, um, if the cable is all right, if it's working, it's all, you know, this is the first one that flashes, then this, 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 uh, and so on. And, you know, each time this LED flashes, another LED has to flash. And so, using this system, you can see if the cable you have plugged in is all right. Let's try and take a look inside. There you can see, has no battery, so I... Well, there is a battery, actually. Um, so, let's see. Uh, okay. And turn it on. As you can see, this LED starts flashing. Oh, I don't have a cable hooked up, so these LEDs won't flash. And, well, actually, I don't have one of those cables, so <laughs> actually, this thing is completely useless. <laughs> anyway, let's turn that off and take a look onto the next thing. This is a two-transistor microphone preamplifier. I haven't tried it out yet, so this thing actually it is not finished yet. This is a portable device. As you can see, it's around as big as my hand is. And, well, what is it? A portable amplifier. As input, volume control, power switch, and your speaker outputs. We can open it up. It's all inside of a metal box. There used to be candy inside. And um, it was made in 2009, as you can see. It's using two integrated circuits. And it is powered by this 9-volt battery. And I think the power output is around, well, 3 watts per channel or something, around there. This thing here is actually something very simple. You have seen this in several videos, because this used to be hooked up to the Grundig R4200 receiver. And it is an input selector. It has um, three inputs right here. Three RCA jack inputs. And this RCA jack output. Where you can hook it up to the receiver. And on the front side it has the selector switch. Let's take a look inside. There you have it. It's all really, really simple. Simple little switch here, some cables and the jacks. And unfortunately it doesn't say when I made it. Normally I write it somewhere in there. But this is really old. It must be at least two years old now. And here we have a little homemade um, radio. It's a crystal radio using two germanium diodes. This is the inside. It's entirely made at home. All homemade. Also the coils I wound by myself. 
you know you can see the two diodes currently it doesn't work because this wire here is broken off but it did work <laughs> I haven't used it a long time now so there is your tuning on and off switch and this is an, another selector where you can select the um, the uh, the coil the size of the coil as these plug and um, these jacks here and on the back side has two antenna inputs and uh, a ground connector and here is the headphone output and I made this in I think around 2006 this is another crystal radio but this is more complicated um, as you can see when we look inside there you can see it and as you can see it uses a special type of coil there, there you can see this coil there is another coil in inside this coil as you can see you can turn that coil and that is for the tuning and um, it has also for the tuning it has this variable capacitor down there and um, there you can see the diode and um, well the connections are all right here you have antenna ground headphones this is the tuning capacitor and this is the coil tuning the coils were all made at home I made them all by myself and um, here is the power switch oh, I'm sorry for these stupid helicopters but anyway um, this originally this was built in around 2004 this is one of the oldest units I still have because normally I take my stuff apart after a short time take it apart again <laughs> because I need to the parts that were used inside I I need for other projects anyway this was originally this was made in 2004 but um, well then later it was um, well some parts were taken out connectors tuning capacitor and um, I reassembled this um, radio here um, oh this year 2009 this is an amplifier that was built using um, circuit boards and parts of other units um, and um, this is um, this I built this um, a short time before I made my YouTube account um, this had a, had an appearance in um, the audio equipment slideshow my very first video and um, let's take a look onto the features I have a button for loudness right here mono stereo selector input selector input one or input two treble regulator bass regulator volume left volume right headphones and the power switch and this is the back side of the unit as you can see I used a part of the chassis of a compact stereo system there you can see the speaker uh, connectors input jacks and right there you can see this was made in 2008 I have my finger right here because I don't want anybody to know my full name so there you have it built in 2008 you can see the power amplifier which came out of uh, the compact stereo system as well as the transformer and right there the preamplifier and tone control came out of an old boom box this is using integrated circuits in the power amplifier and I had to replace one capacitor because it was bad the original one was leaky mm -hmm.